Mayberry. It's it's um, very hometown. You know, the school bus stops in front of my shop and drops the kids off after school. We never locked our doors. You know, you could. It was just a small town. You move around, you see other places, and I think that's how you know where you belong. And I just so happens that I came from where I belong. It's always good to come over the mountain there and see the town. It's just uh, something magical about it. Thousand miners showed up here in a matter of a year's time. So uh, we're the we're the 29ers. 20 years before the 49 go rush out there in California. They get all the history claims and all that, but we was the first. All the easy gold has been found, per se, but the gold is still locked up in the quartz, like you see behind me and up above us here. And where there's glory hole. Matter of fact, where we're standing at right behind us here was the glory hole where they took out 54 pounds, nine ounces of pure gold in one day. Well, it was never easy work. Anytime you swing a pick or a hammer or messing with an explosive like nitroglycerin or dynamite, you was always taking a chance. And plus, there was a lot of other uh, things that went on. You had your uh, respiratory illnesses come later on because of the dust. The drilling of the uh, quartz would produce what's called silica, which is like glass, and that would go into your lungs. And your lungs would harden, and you get to where you couldn't breathe. They needed holes started for the dynamite, so what they'd had, Usually it was a two-person job. This is a little sledgehammer. This is a chisel, a drill bit. Basically it's called a jack. And what people would do is one guy would have to hold this, or a single guy. It'd be called with a single or double jack. And one guy'd hold it, the other guy hit it. Guy hold it and hit twist. Hit. And you kept doing this, but if you missed hit your friend, had a bad day. And they usually try to be a long way away because when blasted, there was a percussion, there was an echo come out, sound, force, and they had to hide from that either, and they'd do that by cupping their ears, uh, open their mouth, they had to, to equalize the pressure. If they didn't, their eardrums burst and their lungs collapsed, so nothing was easy down here. <laughs> uh, the old saying, fire in a hole, that came from, that came from here. The average pay down here was around a dollar a day. Uh, some people made a dollar and a half, some people made two dollars a day. The guy that dealt with the dynamite, the safety man that removed the dynamite that didn't go off. And they did this because of several facts. For the money, uh, basically, and it's the same reason it drives us today, uh, you got paid around, like I said, a dollar, a dollar and a half, two dollars a day. Everybody else out there was getting paid 10 cents a day. That was good money back then. So if you make a dollar a day, that's 10 times, make a dollar and a half. So it's, it's, uh, so you can better for your family. So I came through in the early 80s on an old Panhead motorcycle, old Harley, and stopped paying my first piece of gold. And after that, I was kind of uh, strung out, you should say. I had gold fever. One piece of gold done me in. It used to be that's, you know, mining was everywhere around here. You, you'd go anywhere back in the hills. That's, as I was a kid, would go down to the bottom of the hill and there all kind of mines. Go back and play in tunnels and uh, places had been mining gold. and it was, fun growing up, you know, we would get up in the mornings and you probably wasn't come in for lunch and then we'd be gone the rest of the day. Parents never worried too much where we work. We was out running through tunnels and playing all around in the, the stuff, you know, here in Dahlonega. Dahlonega is a very historic town. It is a very uh, unique town. It's got a lot of neat shops, places to eat. Uh, we used to be a, one of the major places to come to eat back in the 40s and 50s. 60s and 70s, oh, we've been here that long. I came in business with my father who took the restaurant over 1946. And so we've been here, my family has, and the Smith House since 1946. And I said, oh, I will never work in a restaurant. But then once I graduated high school and got out, I realized 
All I really knew anything about was the restaurant business. We got fresh chicken here. We had taken the, this chicken was probably in the chicken house last Friday. It was never as frozen. Put it into our, this is flour, set rising flour, salt and pepper. Just a very simple old fashioned recipe that we've used here. My family has since 1946. Many years, you asked about Delong and the Smith House would always come up. Uh, since then, North Georgia College has grown so much and now you think of Delong of Georgia, North Georgia College and gold and then Smith House. My mother walked out of the kitchen in, uh, on January 16th, 1948 and went over to Dr. Sermon's office and she had me. And then the next day she brought me back to Smith House and I've been here ever since. Uh, that's the way the people were back then. They didn't, you didn't go to the hospital. We lived in two little rooms in the back of the restaurant uh, until I was eight years old. It's funny, in our paper, the Lonegan Nugget, while we were doing a lot of research, is that most of the gossip was put in the paper. You'd hear about people who were running around or doing things that weren't supposed to be and why was why was such just leaving somebody's house at, you know, after dark? Or, it was in, put in the paper. The line is about, about got too busy now for, you know, for us. And I would imagine Atlanta would kind of drive you crazy with all the traffic and you watch on TV talking about a 50 minute commute uh, to downtown. And I said, good grief, you know, that takes me three minutes to get to work from three miles out of town. Look, we need to be unique. We don't need to, to go to be industrial type or try to be like you know, other places. We need, as long as it needs to be itself. Dahlonega is a, is, a, is a neat spot. It's a neat town because it's very unique. It's very authentic. That's a word that we use around here a lot. Um, the shops are owner operators. Um, Wolf Mountain's a family family uh, business, and so we have, you know, there's a vested interest, and so it's not a it's not a hokey kind of facade, um, and so that's that's a that's a great piece of the puzzle for us here in, here in Dahlonega. So this is a family business. Like I mentioned, my father uh, Carl started the winery with me back in, in 99 and you know his background has always been in restaurants and hotels and fine dining and um, so he's always had a love for food and wine so this was really his passion uh, and I was just along for the ride so um, but now you know dad and I made wine side by side he turned the reins over to me um, back in 2011 and you know said son I've, I've taught you everything I know now you got to go uh, take it to the next level so it's, it's been a lot of fun we still work together on a daily basis so he's always in the cellar testing and tasting and making sure things are just right so the soil types that we have here are very similar to what you'll find in southern France and northern Italy uh, the red clay soils there they refer to them as the terra rossa which is a beautiful word for red clay um, our 1800 foot elevations here are perfect for growing and ripening especially Cabernet Sauvignon it's interesting if you get in your car and you just drive 45 mi uh, minutes north, and we have almost a 30-day shorter growing season. So it's very exciting, and our Cabernet, actually my reserve Cabernet from uh, 2011, uh, just took a double gold medal in San Francisco at the San Francisco Chronicle Wine Competition against all of the Napa Valley and a, a 40 to $50 price point against California cabs. So we can, we can do it here in Georgia. I've taken double gold for red, white, and champagne, all from little old Dahlonega. Years ago, it seems as folks were moving into North Carolina, but now they're coming into North Georgia for long weekends and stuff like that. On a busy Saturday here in our tasting room, you know, something's wrong if we don't see three or 400 people um, in a four or five hour window before we have our weddings. And so that, that excitement, that energy, um, it's, it's a blast. Since community is great, um, we've got a little park right in town. We do a lot of things on the weekends, on Friday nights, farmers markets on the weekends. And you know, you see the same 
you see the same people. That's what makes it fun, A, to live here, um, raise families here. You know, everybody kind of catches up uh, when they see each other in town, and it's nothing sterile about it. You know, it's not eyes down, looking where you're going. It's, hey, how are you? How are things? How's, how's your family? Stuff like that. Donning, it does have a lot of magic to it. And, you know, when I first moved to the area, I uh, love the small town feel and, of course, all that. But Dahlonega has always kind of branded the, the travel and tourism industry as their bread and butter, as, as the number one industry in the county. So what a better compliment to travel and tourism than the wine, wine industry. So as the wineries began popping up, uh, you know, 2003, 2004, um, now we have six different wineries in the area, so it, it really leads, it lends itself to be a destination, you know, for, for travelers that are not only interested in small town Dahlonega and all the shops and uh, restaurants and all of that, but also to explore the wine country. So it's a, it's a perfect partnership. the groups that I play with, almost everyone I know in town plays an instrument. Uh, and if they don't play an instrument, they sing. And if they don't sing up front, they'll sing behind the scenes. It's, uh, it's an artsy community, it's a musical community. Uh, it's, it's very expressive. I played guitar. Uh, my father played guitar and banjo and piano. Everyone in my family play, pretty much played an instrument of some sort. Um, so. I didn't really resist, but I never picked one up until I went to college. And, and when I went to college, I found the guitar, and I immediately wanted to perform uh, and play and share it with other people. It's really hard to explain. Um, if you play golf and you hit that perfect shot off the tee box, that's the feeling I get for a song. But I get it for more than just one shot. Um, if you take pride in watching your children with an accomplishment, that's the feeling that you get when you're playing the song just the right way. Um, it's hard to explain if you haven't experienced it, but there are similar situations throughout life. Uh, my cousin Roman and I were in college here at the same time and we kind of traveled in, in different circles, not because we didn't like each other, it just kind of happened that way. And we would run each, into each other at social occasions and he would introduce me to his friends and I would introduce him to mine. I don't know who said it first, but we started introducing ourselves as this is my slightly less attractive cousin. And that just kind of spawned into, we need a name for a band. What are we going to call ourselves? Ugly Cousin. Dahlonega just seems to be kind of a magical place, though. It, if you don't play an instrument and you're from here, and maybe you play an instrument and you find Dahlonega, a lot of people seem to move here. We've got uh, nationally touring artists that are either from Dahlonega or moved to Dahlonega to make this their home, and I don't want to name drop anyone, but uh, it, it, it seems to attract artists and musicians. So the ones that are born here stay here, and the ones that find it move here. It, it might be the gold in the ground that we're standing on right now to uh, the gold that's in the bricks that were made uh, in Cane Creek and, and in the Gold Museum itself. It's, it's a special place, uh, but I really think more than anything else, it's the people that have built the town and chosen to stay here and make it into what it is today. You're trying my patience, try pink carnations, red roses, and yellow daffodils. Don't forget the flowers someday. I know you It's got some magic to it. It definitely has that to it. it uh, and then again, you have to make your own magic up here too, because it's got, it's got everything for that. The rivers, the trees, the uh, buildings, the old buildings, and they squeak, and you can hear people coming into the shop, and, that, and the, it just squeaks everything. So it, yeah, it is pretty magical. We moved up here in 73 opened this pottery in 1975 and been here ever since doing it. One of the things I like doing in this shop, you can touch somebody's life, even with a piece of pottery or something you say to them. It's a wonderful feeling to have someone uh, pick up your mug in the morning and say they look for it every morning. You know, they don't have it for that coffee. They feel bad, you know, they like it. That's, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool.
I leave my door open and I go get my lunch and uh, I've, I've left my door open and gone to Walmart before and come back. I've had money left on my counter. You know, they were here and they were, you know, they had a mug and they, they were ready to roll. And they left the money including tax or as close to it as close as they could get, you know. So I don't worry too much about that. Right now, I am making something that looks like a, sort of like an oak leaf. And there it is on this one done like that. So almost done with that. I usually already know beforehand and what I want and I, I do certain patterns and I repeat those patterns and I repeat, uh, I know where I'm going in my head with it. And so I just have at it then I just go for it. I've been here for so long, I guess, you know. I. And now I'm getting worried because I may be the oldest person on the square. That's getting scary. I tell you what, the, the city's coming here. When we used to drive up 400, coming back here at night, there was nobody on the road. Nobody, you know. But now, you know, it's, there's a lot of people on the road coming here too. And they're coming for the same reasons I did, the rivers and the scenery and the mountains and the town and all that. I've been here for so long, I guess, you know. I, and now I'm getting worried because I may be the oldest person on the square. That's getting scary. Well, this part here originally was a buggy shed for the doctor's buggy. And then they turned it into a barbershop after that. Had a barbershop here and a beauty shop way back in the other end back there. It's been a barbershop ever since. 90 year old this year. I've been cutting hair this uh, 50 year, last September. I've been here 47 or 8 or something like that of them, I guess. But it's it's been been a good life, really. We have meet, you meet a lot of people, get acquainted with a lot of people. A lot of your older cadets comes back by to see you down maybe 40 years ago. Customers comes by, it's been, I cut their hair maybe 30 years ago and they come back by once in a while, maybe some of them even 40 years ago, 40 some odd years ago. They'll still come back by when they're in town. It's home, so I just didn't ever want to leave home. Want to come in? Uh, this is our place, yep. There are three current shops in here. We have art galleries, folk art studio, I have a local gift shop, and then there is Galanaga Candle Works. On Mondays and Tuesdays, the other two shops are not open, but we also have a spa room with a licensed massage therapist who works out of the back. And the building was renovated twice. It was built in 1881, and the vet lived here, so of course the vet was pretty much the doctor too. So. Um, it's great to be in the historic spaces because people are always coming in and asking. It's it's small, so you know you don't have to worry about that. But it's all kinds of gifts. Uh, I try to feature a lot of locally made items. We have local artists. We have woodworked items. I have jewelry items. So it's pretty fun. This is my retirement. <laughs> I've sold real estate my whole life, so. How great is Dahlonega? Incredible food, history, wonderful people. You've got locals who've been here for generations and generations, but they're very um, welcoming. Uh, you've got a tremendous amount of churches. We probably have the most um, charitable community I've ever met. We have everything, everything here. And uh, to boot is picturesque and just perfect Georgia weather. <laughs> Have you tried ours? We'll offer you a sample. You want to taste one? We 
opened our doors uh, in 1982. Uh, we were a little mom and pop, still are, but my mom and pop actually started the business. And so uh, we've been on this corner now for 35 years and we make in the neighborhood 80 different kinds of handmade chocolates, fudges, pralines. So this is um, the beginning of pralines. Right now we've got uh, brown sugar, granulated sugar, heavy cream, salt, cream of tartar. We'll add some Georgia grown pecans to that. Um, and then as it cools, we'll dip them out and have some delicious treats. Um, most of the recipes either came through the family or uh, when my mom started it, she had several early 1900s cookbooks that she pulled recipes from and then worked with those to develop bigger recipes. And um, yeah, that's what's gotten us to, to where we are here. You know, they watch me make the candies right there in front of them. Um, it's, it's a connection, you know. They, and then when they walk in the door and they get the aroma, then they're sold. Because uh, to watch us make it and then get to taste it um, along with the smell, that's how we're creating those memories for people about Dahlonega. They go home talking about us, I hope. Annually, we produce about 20 tons of chocolate and fudge out of this little shop. Uh, split probably 60% chocolates and 40% fudge. A lot of folks think about Dahlonega, they think about the fudge factory. Um, we've kind of become a landmark. We've been on this corner so long. People give directions by us, which is is great, great honor, you know. But it's hard for me to walk down the sidewalk and not see six people I know between here and the car. So yeah, I mean, you see people everywhere you go. If you go to the local restaurant, you're going to see six or eight people that you know, and that part's you know fantastic. There's lots of things about Dahlonega that are special to me. Um, my family is here, I grew up here, uh, my business is here. Um, I'm passionate about Dahlonega and the way it's connected to the outdoors. Um, we've got so many different things to experience in Dahlonega that it just makes it a very special place to live and a special place to, to raise kids. And I don't know, it's just a, it's a very magical kind of place. Georgia Power manager here for 32 years and I got to know everybody because when the power went out of course they called me and uh, a lady called me one, one night and said uh, my power's out and I said well okay I said uh, how do we get there and she said uh, don't y'all still drive those yellow trucks <laughs> that's about the, that's about the funniest thing that's ever happened to me there's been a I've been lucky, I think my guardian angel looking at me. I've, I've uh, should have been electrocuted twice, but I won. I reached up and grabbed 4,000 boats twice and didn't get killed. So the good Lord's looking at me. <laughs> they wasn't, but uh, two restaurants here when I moved here and the, the town was still the business district. It wasn't a, uh, historic district uh, tourist attraction. So that has changed since I've been here. The, the, all the wires, we had lucky enough to get all the wires put underground around so you don't see any wires underground. So uh, we were able to get that done and all the University of Georgia's art college came here and designed the colors for us. And we had a, a visionary committee that went around and talked to all the business owners in the paint this building at their expense. So it's been a team effort. We just have so much to offer, you know, you can go you can go rafting, you can go canoeing, you can go climb a mountain, you can go to a winery, or you come to town and go through it's got a lot of artifacts about the gold rush. The University of Georgia, North Georgia is here. We call ourselves the most patriotic small city in the U.S. I don't know whether it's true or not, but that's what we say anyway. Nobody's called our hand on it. <laughs>